my father was a, a science teacher, so I got exposed to technology and started tearing it apart you know, very young. Um, and at one point a computer came home um, and the same thing happened there. I think at the same time I started to realize that I really like enjoyed thinking like a criminal but had no desire to be one. So it's like, what do you do with that as an outlet? And that's oftentimes I think how hackers kind of get their start. So that was kind of the pretext, but then getting into you know, careers, um, <clears throat> I discovered that pen testing was a thing pretty much straight out of high school and that was Christmas because all of a sudden I can do this and make a living and not go to jail, that's fantastic. Um, really one thing led to another and, and that's kind of what became Bug Crowd from you know, a pivot from like hacking and the thinking that's involved and that sort of thing um, into entrepreneurship. <laughs> I think if you're in Bug Bounty as a hunter, you're already an entrepreneur. Like there's, there's so many folk that we see um, and that we've seen you know, through this entire kind of journey so far. They'll get into bug hunting, they'll, they'll grow in, in what they learn, um, they'll you know, alongside that grow in their business skills and you know, they'll go off and start a platform or you know, people get bitten by this kind of bug to be able to go out and build a thing that actually kicks off when they start bug hunting. Um, and frankly, it's true. Like the, this idea of like going out and, and finding vulnerabilities and actually building, you know, your own kind of capacity to earn and all those different things. It's it's a form of entrepreneurship. Wow, difficult, definitely. Like, uh, you know, it, it's as the founder as well. There's this aspect of like it's my baby, and and it's an inherently you know, I wouldn't say difficult thing or, or, or bad thing, but it's it's a big deal in that sense. So that, that aspect of it, I think, is, is something that I'm pretty comfortable to talk about because I get asked a lot. <music> Critical. Uh, you know, cybersecurity as, a, as an industry, I, I kind of make this joke sometimes, semi-ironically, but there's a point behind it. Like, this is an industry built on unintended consequence. Like, no one builds a business planning for it to be vulnerable and, and for it to get attacked by folks that aren't their direct competition in market, right? So, you know, theoretically, we shouldn't even be here in the first place, right? Um, what that kind of necessitates is this, this idea of like constantly reacting and responding to where the bad guys are going, like what's new, what's vulnerable, like what are the trends? Because ultimately we exist because they do. Um, to me, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because you don't want to convert that into being purely reactive and tactical. Um, but this idea, to your point, of staying ahead of trends and actually trying to see what's coming around the next corner, I think that's really important. Never. <laughs> I, I have this, because this, this comes up a lot. You know, people that come to me, like, founder of crowd, cool, like, you probably know some stuff that could help and they'll, they'll ask questions. Imposter syndrome comes up a lot. Um, in the security community as well as in the founder community. Um, and how I've come to think about it and talk about it is if, if you're not feeling imposter syndrome to some degree, you're probably not pushing any kind of meaningful boundary. Because like you think of what you do as an entrepreneur, like you're trying to create value out of chaos and you're doing stuff that's never been done before. So by definition, you are kind of an imposter. Um, and yeah, that's, 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 you know, that can be a scary thing sometimes. I, I think actually getting comfortable with that idea and learning how to deal with that, that's actually the more important thing. You know, feeling imposter syndrome or any kind of insecurity or doubt. To me, if you, if you minimize that, as I said before, you're either not doing anything interesting or there's you know, stuff that's not quite right about how you perceive the gravity of what you're doing. So you know, the bigger thing is like, how do you handle that? How do you process it? Who do you have around you to you know, give you feedback and, and help you learn and become more comfortable. Um, and that's how you kind of resolve it. <music> Having everyone bought in and, and like really willing to like get in and get involved, like those, those events are the ones that, that go best. Because mm -hmm. you've got a customer that's intrigued, like they, they literally want to get in the dirt with the researchers and, and collaborate yep. even at that level. Um, I think that's that's probably the thing that I've seen like researchers and customers come away from bug bashes and feel like was the biggest contributor to them feeling like it's a, a success. Um, 
And then obviously it's like, you know, how much do people get paid? Uh, you know, was there, were there bugs found? All those different things. Because there is a lot of advocacy that happens anyway on the platform. Like the, the unique thing about a bug bash on that size is all happening in real time mm -hmm. in the room with, with people watching on. So it's a, it's a lot more, I would say, challenging um, for the folks that are doing that, but Bug Crowd does it really well. Yep. So if you can demonstrate that, you've got trust, you've got confidence, and people just dig in and go harder on, on both sides. So if you can get all those, all those different things together, you create a flywheel that ultimately nets out to everyone walking away saying that was all. Awesome.